Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Gum here. And, uh, I'm coming at you with, uh, what, today should be Friday's upload? Right. So, this is a deck that, uh, I was gonna save for a little bit later, but I didn't... I'm kind of, uh, low on time right now to find, like, a new deck and actually test something. So, I'm just gonna whip this out early. Uh, Colossal VMAX and Expanded. It's a deck that, I think it won a recent, a small tourney recently. I don't really know. I haven't been paying attention that much lately. I've been trying to... I've been working on my VGC strats, because I kind of want to get into some VGC again. Anyway. Uh, what does this card do? It does damage. It's pretty much the exact same thing... Uh, sorry, I gotta, I gotta lower my chair real quick. It, it's kind of the same thing as Groudon in the sense where it's... Uh, you're a bulky fighting evolution that's slowly setting up and you're gonna do a shitload of damage when you're finished unlike groudon you have a lot more hp you have 90 more hp than primal groudon did and also you you have a another attack that isn't just your big bulky like oh i'm gonna blow you up like al-qaeda uh, no like uh, eruption shot is also very solid it's actually the main attack you're using with this deck though so usually eruption shot is just gonna be two-shotting everything and while you're doing so, you can accelerate energy. And the way that you're setting up Eruption Shot is not only with Guru, which if you, you should already know what this card does. You put a card from your hand on top of your deck and like re you, you replace the card. It's basically a free draw one. And when you draw that card, you can also set down an energy. But you also have access to Mercargo and Expanded, which is pretty cool. Uh, Mercargo is just Smooth Over's ability. Um, you just search your deck for any card and put it on top. Uh, and with Guru... You can draw into anything you want, but usually smooth over is just going to be for an energy. And uh, we're running a 4-3 coal line. You always want to be finding your Colossals turn 1. That's like the most important part of the deck. We're also running a 3-2 Macargo. Uh, same reason that you're running the... Like, the basic is really important to find early game. However, it's not important enough to run 4 like it is for coal because even if you whip the turn 2 Macargo... If you have Guru, you can still get the turn 2 Eruption Shot, and that's a lot more important. Uh, I should also point out that we're using the, the Slugma with 3 Retreat, but not the other one. There's a couple of them with 3 Retreat. Which one is it? It doesn't really matter. Either way, we're running the, the one with Stampede, because on the off chance that you ever attach 2 Energy to this, you can hit for 20, I guess. That's less important. It's mostly for the, th the 3 Retreat. You'll find out in a minute. Uh, we're also running a DNC Prism. I know the list that won whatever tourney it did, did not play DNC Prism. I questioned that, so I cut it up for a little while. I went on a winning streak without it, but I also almost lost nearly every game. And barely won, pretty much due to luck. Uh, I think DNC is just really good. DNC, is, in my opinion, is an auto-include. It makes several matchups easier for math. And it also means that uh, for certain KOs that you would need double strong energy for, you can be a lot more lenient and just have like the stone energy or the basic fighting. So you can swing for 280 without needing a second strong energy. Another thing is that uh, with strong energy and DNC Prism, uh, your eruption shot will do 170, which is going to kill Lele's. So... The, the reason that's important is that Lele's been seeing a little bit more play than it has in the past, which is actually why it rose, a, like, it, this thing spiked in packs, specifically the gold one, but all the other arts did too. Uh, and then we're running a Landy. Uh, Landy is primarily for Decidueye against uh, Ekrao Plume. Because Ekrao Plume, on paper, you would think is a completely unwinnable, don't even bother checking for Desi, you lose that matchup anyway, but not really. They only play four basic energy. They need three of them to one-shot you with Eggrow. So the the cool thing about Landy is that uh, you can go through Decidueye. Like the, because it's an EX and not a GX or V, uh, Decidueye's ability doesn't stop it. So with Deancey and strong energy, you two-shot with Hammerhead. And if you have two strong energy and Deancey, you one-shot with Land's Judgment without needing to discard your energy. And I, I've beaten Desi Plume by doing that. Although, that that's a lot more unlikely than just two-shotting with Hammerhead. You can usually just trade KOs just fine. Uh, as long as you can get past the initial egg row, which is usually going to be with Colossal, uh, all you have to do is just gust their plume. So as long as you don't prize Guzma or Landy, you'll be fine. 
Uh, we're also playing one Dede and one Lele. I like the Lele. Dede's been a card I've been considering cutting, but it, the, the main reason it's there is that if you if your turn one hand is just not very good, uh, Quick Ball just lets you refresh to see what you want to draw. So, like, the reason it feels like it's not that good is because if you just don't Brick turn one, you don't really use it that often. But every... Another thing is that a lot of games where I have Brick turn one, I can't Quick Ball for Dede when I want to. So, a lot of times when I want to use it, I really can't. But it's... I may or may not cut the Dede. So, moving on to the supporters, uh, we're running 4 Karina. This is another thing that I might cut down to 3. I think Karina is definitely broken in this deck. Like, turn 1 Karina for quick means that you can get your Slugma and your Colossal down turn 1. So, I think Karina is a very, very good card to have. It also searches out a lot of your 1 ofs or, like, other important cards. It just searches consistency, which is really nice. Uh, so, I or I'd argue for 4, but again, it's... You're not using it every turn, and there's a lot of times where you're probably better off just using a draw supporter, so I do think you want to cut... I, I do think you could afford to cut it down to three. I think the the only reason I do play four is that I think turn one, it's so good that you don't want to whiff it if you can help it. Uh, we're also running three Juniper and two in. Uh, I don't think Juniper is good enough i don't like you don't want to discard your resources because you run a lot of one ofs and your energy doesn't isn't recoverable uh this doesn't my list isn't running stretcher so your pokemon aren't recoverable either so there's a lot of not a lot of resources but there's a good chunk of resources that if you can you want to preserve uh but the cool thing about juniper though is that even if you're discarding resources you can smooth over into a good card and then juniper into said card so that is pretty neat and then two in, uh, I, I tried playing one in. I don't think one in is good. Uh, same reason why I don't play four Juniper. Like, preserving resources is better in certain scenarios. Because once your board is already set up, you don't really want to be just digging that hard. So, in is good shuffle draw. And if you're behind on prizes, it, it's really easy to recover. Because if you in and take a KO with Colossal... Or even if it's not a KO, if you just end them to a low hand count, they can't really deal with a big Colossal in front of them. Uh, we're also running one Guzma and one Acerola. Uh, I'm skeptical of only running one Guzma. I kind of liked two. Same thing with Acerola. Acerola is a card that, like, it's not bad to run two of either of these supporters. But I think my main argument is that my A spec is Dowsing, not Scramble Switch or Comp Search. And because of Dowsing and already running, like, four Versus Seekers... I don't think you care about running one of those supporters. The biggest issue there is prizing. Uh, so I guess, yeah, let's, I guess that's going to be our segue into items. Uh, we're running Dowsing. I play the Scramble Switch. Scramble Switch fucking sucks. No, I thought I smelled something. Oh, uh, yeah, I think Scramble Switch fucking sucks in this deck. Like, yeah, if you have four energy on a Colossal, you can Scramble Switch, but... If you're gonna heal anyway, they can't really deal with the Colossal. Is it really is it really that much better to just scramble switch and do another Colossal then heal instead of just Acerola? I don't think so. Dowsing is able to get back stuff like your your one stadium tools. And it lets you cut a lot of these like a lot of items that I don't think should be two ofs anyway. Uh, if you, for whatever reason, do need a second copy, you do have the Dowsing there. I think, I played with Comp Search too, because Comp, like, Karina basically finds energy. But I do think that Dowsing is probably the best option in this deck. If I wasn't running Dowsing, I'd probably run the, the Scoop Up Cyclone. Just because you can basically Karina for Acerola, so you can preserve energy on, like, Max Pot. Uh, we're running four Quick Ball and four VS Seeker. Just general consistency, and the thing that, uh... That would probably surprise you is that I play Heavy Balls. I don't play Ultra Balls. I play Heavy Balls. Uh, the cool thing about Heavy Ball is that you, I mean, already not needing to discard stuff. It searches your every Pokemon in your Colossal line and your Macargo line. Uh, and that's the reason that we run the three, uh, the three Retreat Slugma. Is that you can Heavy Ball for it turn one. Mm. Ooh. Phlegm shot up my throat. It tastes good. Uh, anyway, 
If you can help it though, turn like if you're gonna Karina, you usually Karina for quick ball, not heavy ball. Uh, cause if you're gonna draw into either of them later, you would rather draw into heavy ball because like heavy ball gets your Macargo and your coal. Quick ball do not. Quick ball does not. What the fuck do not? Quick ball does not find either of these. But heavy ball finds these and their basics, so I don't know. Universally heavy ball is better than I don't want even I don't even want to say it's better than quick ball or ultra. Because we are only running three heavy ball instead of four. Like we do with quick ball. The reason that we do run four quick ball over four heavy ball is specifically for like dead A and Lele. Um finding those turn one is super important. And if you do, like finding it speaking of turn one, like it does turn one, it doesn't make a difference with heavy ball. So either way, you're going to be running seven ball search, but quick ball isn't out to get you, isn't out to bricking, which is a bigger reason why I think heavy ball is, it's still good, but er, like it's, I think it's better. Here's how I would put it. It's better than quick ball, but quick ball is more important because Karina searches half of your heavy ball targets already. So yeah. Uh, we're also running one max pot. The original list ran two. And I, a couple of lists that weren't the, the list that I stole from. I mean, this is completely different from the list that I borrowed anyway. Uh, a lot of the other lists were running like two ace roll, a two max pot. But I actually, max pot is a really good one of. I don't like it as a two of. Every, every single time I would ever max pot, it was like, okay, I would either rather ace a roller here or i have to, like i have a karina but not a versus seeker so i have to max pot like i can't ace a roller and preserve my energy because the nice thing about ace a roller is that scooping up your energy with your coals means that like if you have a two energy colossal so basically like you had one energy and then you accelerated an energy off the top deck right uh you scooped it up you put the energy back on the colossal and you guru the energy back on top so you're still drawing a card but you're also setting the energy so you do the extra damage. So Acerola is almost universally better than Max Pot. Discarding energy without any way to recover them sucks. And uh, it's an item though, so you can search it with Karina, which is cool. And you can use it combined with another supporter. Uh, other one-ups that we run are Great Catcher. Uh, the reason I'm running the one Great Catcher is because you have so much good math against like Dede and Lele. And every deck benches them. You might as well take advantage of it, especially when you can just Karina for it. Like, you can Karina for a Gus. That's kind of nutty. So we do play the one Great Catcher. Uh, we're also running the one Blower. This is a card that I do think I would play a two of if we weren't running Dowsing. Uh, mainly for Trashapult. But you're able to get rid of tools off, like, a Garb. Uh, you can get rid of Floats. You can get rid of Stadiums. But considering that Trashapult has been dipping a little bit in play, plus I already think Trashapult isn't a bad matchup. Uh, on top of me already thinking Dowsing is a better A spec, you don't need the second. I think it's just a luxury at that point. Uh, and then we also run one Escape Rope. This is a card that people are probably going to question me on, but hear me out. I don't want to lose to Snorlax. Not Snorlax VMAX, Block, the Plasma one. I don't want to just lose the dolls because they go, okay, cool, uh, counter catcher block GG. It's like, oh, well, I guess I'm scooping because I can't attack with Macargo. Or I guess I could technically attack with Slugma, but then they go, oh, you're going to attach stone energies because you literally have to? Faba. But yeah, this is basically your out to Snorlax. And other than that, it's also good because you can just move stuff. Like, it, past being a way to get out of block it's also just a switching card that isn't bad and if something in the active is just too beefy to ko and you're in a situation where you're putting you're forcing your opponent to promote something that you can ko uh escape rope is gonna be like all right cool what do you want to die and it's like well fuck i either give you like a two prizer or i give you a support bond is usually gonna be the situation or they put that or, or they send up another attacker with like no energy on it or something uh, but Escape Rope is cool. And then we're running one Swell. Uh, this is another thing that I could argue for playing uh, the second Blower for. Is that you only... You don't really care about other stadiums. But you also don't really want to play your own stadiums. 
Like, there's a bunch of different stadiums Colossal could play. I was messing with Parallel. I was messing with Dojo. There was even, like, the idea of Beach being thrown around. But at that point, I think, like, you don't... If you don't care about what stadium you run, probably just play Swell. Because... You only play two basic energy, so Dojo kind of gets invalidated. Plus, you play Deanthe and Strong already. Uh, Beach is good, like, for one turn. And then useless for the rest of the game. And Parallel can get bumped by Swell, and you can just play Pseudo Wudo. So, I think Swell is probably just the best, the best stadium you could play. Just for the sake of keeping other stadiums out of play. So, between Swell and Blower, you could probably play a second copy of either one. Uh, but... I think just to have the counter stadium, Swell is better. Uh, we're also running two Assault Vests. This is a card that I don't know why people are playing Buff Padding over. Why Why are you playing Buff Padding over Assault Vest? You either play Assault Vest or you play No Tools. Or I guess you could play Muscle Band too. But why w Buff Padding fucking sucks. Buff Padding is garbage. Don't play that card. Even, a, even Assault Vest. Like, the, the biggest problem with Buff Padding is that Blower completely invalidates it as a card. And don't get me wrong, it does that to Assault Vest too, but Assault Vest has a lot better math on several major, like, interactions with the game. And it also stacks with Stone Energy, so you're getting minus 60 on any special energy attack or a turn. And the things that are going to hit you hardest are mods with special energy. Like other Colossals, Mew Cram, Roxy, uh, Pikas that are playing either Flash Energy or Speed. Uh, what other big ones are there? There's more. But those are, like, Ultimate Ray? Did, did Assault Vest on Lele or Dede means Ultimate Ray can't KO unless they have Muscle Band. So they have to go, like, Muscle Band, Gust, with the Double Drag. Like, they have to do all this shit in order to even, like, KO something with Assault Vest on it. Again, like Buff Padding, it's invalidated by Blower. However, since Buff Padding is an HP boost, not a damage reduction card, your opponent has an extra turn to find their Blower. Because their damage output doesn't change. Assault Vest does. Assault Vest changes their damage output and stops three hit like it stops two hit KOs a lot more consistently than padding does. Because all they need to do is on the next turn, the turn after they attack once, then they need to go, okay, well blow or KO. Whereas with Assault Vest, a lot of these interactions, if they don't get rid of it on the first turn that it's down, like the if they don't get rid of it before they swing for the first time, it's already fucking up their two shot. And that's all it needs to do. And it's also nice that it works on mods that aren't colossal. So yeah, I think Assault Vest is just... A, it's it's better in every way than padding. I don't know why you would play padding over it. Like, nothing, all, nothing already hits 330. Like, I guess padding is changing some weird two shots into three shots, but not really. Because, again, they can just dig a lot harder for blower. And they have two turns to do it. And then Float. Uh, float is just really good. One of the lists was playing three, but I think with uh, the Escape Rope, you don't need the third. And then our energy lineup is four strong, four stone, two fighting. Uh, it's just a solid lineup. I think that you could argue for the third fi basic fighting. I think the second, uh, I think the third basic fighting would be really good. But there's just not very much space for it. Like, like, like again, you could cut the Dead A. You could cut the fourth Karina. But whether or not that would go into a third basic fighting over something like... Uh, another swell or like a, a, a bat a fourth heavy ball another one of supporter like the, the second guzma there's even an argument to play marnie in this deck because uh unlike in you can like you can smooth over and then draw cards with marnie while disrupt while disrupting your opponent and that's kind of cool that being said though i don't think it's worth cutting the second in just because in is so good late game whereas marnie kind of drops the ball anyway let's go play some games with cole All right. Uh, so, due to what, due to a potential fire hazard yesterday, I was not able to upload the Reshi video. So that's probably going to be coming out right before this video does. So you guys are going to get a double upload today. So good for you. Uh, my game crashed. 
I wonder why. Oh, there it goes. Oh, uh, so we... I I don't know how other people play the deck. I've been going second every game with it. Uh, mainly because, like, that turn one supporter is very, very, very huge for setup here. And we're buying a turn of our evolution without your opponent getting, like, a full turn to, like, supporter their shit into play. It's ADPZ. Unfortunate. So we started with pretty much a completely dead hand. That's what a lot of my losses has been to with this deck, is mostly dead hands and ADP. Because uh, ADP things doing ADP things is not very nice. So they're going to have three energy on the Zacian in turn one. Uh, Actually, that Slogan is really good. Let's go strong energy. Okay, that is... That's actually really bad for us. I'm just going to retreat into the Slugma here. Now that I know what my top deck is, I kind of need to have Guru in play. Uh, having basically three strong energy turn one is very bad. Also missing turn one supporter and the turn one coal. So... It's basically like we went first. Oh, that fucking sucks, dude. So, even if I do find the Colossal, I am not safe. So, we are just going to keep Primate Wisdoming uh, Strong Energies here because... Really? I think we just... Yeah, we have to scoop here. There's nothing we can do about that. Even if we bench a Colossal, uh, they're just going to Gust KO. And the fact that they're getting a free KO before I can even attack, uh, we basically just can't win there. Especially whenever I have both Gurus in play. Which I'm going to inevitably have to do. Like, if they're already getting an easy three KO, that's two prizes for them. All they have to do is Gust twice. Like, even if I set up the Colossal... Without them gusting and killing it with Zacian. There's no guarantee that I'm still going to do anything for the rest of the game. So, that's another thing that I was thinking about putting in the deck was the one of Ranger. But a, a lot of the games against ADP that I don't brick, I usually win. So let's try this again. But yeah, you can see... You can see what I mean when I say, like, turn one Karina would have been... Like, turn one Karina in that situation would have been insane. Because had I had the turn one Colossal down, or even just the Karina so I could find the Macargo on the following turn, that would have been insane. Also, we're playing against Licky Licky, with uh, evidently quad E-hammers, quad crushings. Luckily, we only need one attachment to do stuff. I don't see a world where we lose this game. Turn one Karina would be really good. If I were to top deck it. Uh, cause I can start- That's an, not just Desi- Desi, uh, what the- why do I keep saying Desi? I keep- uh, Eggrow, Plume. It's not just for Eggrow Plume either. Like, Hammerhead against all these one prizer decks is really good. Like, it's really good against Mew Cram. Because you one-shot Mews with a strong energy or DNC down. And, uh, you can snipe other Mews. And if you evolve into Colossal, they're probably gonna put their Clefairy into play. Which you also one-shot. I am very lucky. Uh, I just kind of invalidate them turn one. So, I didn't prize anything important, I don't think. Yeah, the rest of this doesn't really matter. I prized one stone energy. Oh, I prized Guzma. Rip. But, I'm also not that concerned about it. Uh, let's go after their Ditto. Assault Vest is whatever. There's one of our energy. 
I think the Dodo seems good here, though. Uh, mostly because if they go into the Licky Licky, we one-shot them. Because Licky 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 My Dicky only has a, I believe, 130. If it does have more, then I can just go into D. I can, I can just grab Deancey. I can BS eager for Karina again. So what exactly does Licky Licky... Yeah, it does have 130. Discard a random card during your opponent's hand. Discard the top card and discard an energy from active. Okay. While hitting Ditto, there was the correct play. Now, I think if I do kill the Ditto, I swing into the Pidgey. Just because I can get DNC. Him being able to discard a random card from my hand is very scary, though. So I think I'm, what I'm going to do is that... Oh, he's passing. Okay. That changes things quite a bit. So I'm going to Versus Seeker for Karina. I will get Deancey just because I want to bench it. Hmm. I think I'm going to go escape rope. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to smooth over a completely dead card. Like, I'll solve that this isn't even that dead of a card. I think I can just get rid of the other, another coal. So let's go hammerhead, kill the ditto. The reason I wanted to escape rope before doing anything else is that if he promoted the Lickitung, I wasn't going to bench the... DNC or attach the strong. But if he did send up the... I, I wanted to see what he sent up before revealing what, what I had. That way, no matter what he did, it felt like a bad option. And also, I'm completely okay with him uh, discarding one of my strong energies here, because that means I'm still gonna KO. And he realized that, and not finding another Pokemon, he just scoops there. So, let's go into another game. Hopefully I don't break and lose. I want to play against a not jank deck and then not break. So, a real deck where I don't break. Uh, you would think that on paper, uh, the biggest flaw with Colossal isn't breaking. It's that you brick if the Macargo dies. So, what happens if your opponent gusts and KOs Macargo? And my answer to that would be... Because of Guru, and only because of Guru, you don't always lose if they gust my cargo. Because if they do, they're not hitting the Colossal. And if they don't damage your Colossal, you're free to just set up the fucking 240 attack. Like, you can one-shot stuff with, like, the Colossal. So if they're not swinging into it, then, like, you're extending the period... You're, ext you're extending the longevity of your Colossal by, like, two turns. For every one turn that they're not attacking. Due to things like Max Pot. And the Acerola. And you also don't need Macario to Acerola loop. You only need the Guru to do that. So. Yeah. Oh. That is unfortunate for my opponent. Uh. Well. 
It's also not fortunate for me either because there's a lot of chances for me to miss the KO. If I had the strong energy in hand, I would have it, no question. Uh, I am going to Lele here to see if... Okay, well, Deancey is prized, so it doesn't matter anyway. So, I think I go for the turn one Karina. We're almost certainly facing against Trashapult. Yeah. So, I'll go for the Coal. And I'll go for the Heavy Ball as well. Yeah, I'm fine with just leaving that there. He can blow my float stone, but I don't really care because he can't kill this Slugma. Unless it's Ultra. If this is Ultra Neck, then I'm fucked. Not fucked. It's actually not that bad of a matchup. But I just... Yeah, actually, no. If, even if it is Ultra Neck, leaving the Slugma active is correct. They are going to Great Catcher, so this probably is Ultra Neck. Yeah, it's Ultra Neck. Okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, we ab we absolutely body Ultra Neck. Like, I actually don't know how they win this match. Unless they can stick Toxin for like six turns. But if they can't stick the Toxin, then uh, we don't really care. I will say, uh, attaching Float to Slugma turn 1 was bad if I was just going to Lele to see what was in deck. If Deancey was in deck, by the way, I was going to go for the uh, Juniper there. Actually, I might be mistaken, but I think I may have priced Dede as well. Those were the two things I wanted to check for in deck, was Deancey and Dede. Yeah, I was going to say, I know for a fact that that fourth card is not a fucking double dragon. Dead Eight is in deck, so is the blower. Uh, how hard can we sack? We can sack pretty hard. Aw, that was the card I wanted. That actually would have been super sick if I had drawn that that turn. Oh, okay, it was a Sycamore. I fucking figured. Laser, what the hell? Turning laser in this? Ew. Luster of dick balls. Um, I'm just going to ace a Rolla and give you the Lele. I should have just left it active. I got greedy. All right, he's going to luster of dick balls. We still theoretically win the prize trade, so I don't think it's an issue. That is a huge top deck. Uh, I will just in here, because I, I do need an energy to do anything, and I drew it. Nice, dude. Uh, let me just prime it with some of the cargo back I guess nice let's go smooth over uh we'll go smooth over for a, sh a stone energy
Swell. Uh, Swell is nice. I do think it's not gonna matter, though. Oh, he displayed the Trash Lanch, which is good to know, but we only have two items in discard anyway. If he doesn't find the t t tool here, I think I definitely win the game. But I have a couple of turns. Yeah. I will do that. I think what I'm going to do is Primate Wisdom the Strong Energy away. Yeah. Primate Wisdom the Strong Energy for a basic energy. Uh, that's actually not good. I don't like the idea of benching Dede here, but I while I have abilities, I kind of want to use them. Uh, I guess I'm attaching this. Oh yeah, because I can Ace Arola to preserve energy. So yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, and I can also kill Toxin here. Yeah, let me smooth over an energy. Cool. He's scooping. All right. Well, you know what? Let me get a... I think I can get one more in. Let's, end, let's see if we can get a win streak of three. That would be pretty cool. Ultra Neck is still jank, though. I don't consider that a real deck. It's like... It's a budget deck. It's not real. People play it on ladder all the time, but... Eh. If you're trying to tech against the ladder, you definitely play two blower in this. But again, Ultra Neck isn't a real deck, so for the sake of the tournaments, I would not play two blower. Or rather, I wouldn't play two blower for the reasoning of Ultra Neck, because nobody actually plays it in tournaments. Due to the deck just being weak, inconsistent, and bad. Although, based on ladder, you would think it's not cons inconsistent. You would think it's the fucking best drawing deck in the format, by far. Because fucking Ultra Neck players on ladder will sense the end of like 18 cards. So we are going to unfortunately go first. Or fortunately. Ooh, that hand is not bad. It's not good either. We're going to be reliant on two really good top decks. But we're playing against janky garbage, so I think we have more than two top decks. We did prize two Slugma. Prizing two Slugma actually really sucks. But it's fine. We're, we're gonna win. I'm just gonna assume that they're playing DCE for Trapping Bite. And see if they do zero damage. The other thing is that they're a Zacian player. But either way, attaching the stone energy here I think is correct. Uh, because if they are playing Zacian, they don't KO without Muscle Band. They're going to level ball. Oh, is this Mewcram? Uh, well, either way, if, they're, if it's a Mew-based deck, then I'm glad I did not discard the land. Well, I don't think I have any chance to discard the Landorus. Yeah, not yet anyway. But that's knowledge that we want to have very early. Yeah, evidently this is like a, a shitty new cram list that plays Penasaur for some reason. Penasaur and Stunfisk. I'll say though, because of the effect of Stunfisk's attack, uh, it is kind of annoying that it gets around both the Salt Vest and Stone Energy. So that's that's very good for them. Uh, unfortunately for us, if it is Mew Cram and they find the turn one snipe, we probably lose. Unless we get a really good top deck. Which is still very possible. Yeah, it's Mewcram. Okay, that's a whack list. They're playing Ninja Boy and shit in it. Gross. I'm actually surprised they discarded that. 
Because hitting weakness against Cole seems huge. Then again, if they're doing it with special energy uh, against my Assault Vest and Stone Energy, they ended up doing less than their base damage anyway. So they are benching the Cram. I think them starting the Stun Fisk is really bad for them. Because not only do they need... They need, what? Blower, D-Valley, DCE, Float. They need a four-card combo. And I guess the Cram, which they got. So they, they would need a five-card combo to hit this. Based on them discarding D-Valley, they have another one in their hand. Low Puff. Oh. Oh, yeah. So they're going to do that to get the bat. Okay. I was about to say, why are they going to get that card? But yeah, the, the last card in their hand is 100% D-Valley. So they're trying to dig. They have not played a supporter yet. I think the biggest problem for them is that they need to find the blower. Because if they already have D-Valley in hand, it doesn't do anything without blower. And pretty much everything relies on them hitting their blower, which I'm assuming is a one of. Although, for the sake of uh, correct plays, I should assume they play two. Unless they play dowsing. If they play dowsing, they definitely only play one blower. Uh, but... It's a stinky list, so they might just be running dowsing with two blower. I don't know. Either way, the, the based on the lack of them playing cards, they probably hit most of the combo pieces and not the blower. Nope, he's just gonna trapping bite. Uh we're gonna versus seeker for no cards. I'm just gonna smooth over for Juniper here. And I guess we're gonna attach another stone energy. Yeah. That seems fine to me. So at any point, I could just escape rope to get around trapping by it. And after I have a big colossal setup, I don't see how they win. I guess while we're waiting for them to play out their turn, uh, another card that I was considering for this list was Bench Barrier. Uh, most likely the Mew, just because it does damage. Uh, specifically for this matchup. But it's also good against, like, a uh, Roxy. So they can't just, like, Roxy a bunch, Linear, Zig, and then, like, snipe your uh, baby guys. But I think the big issue is... Well, um, against Roxy, anyway, the issue with the Mew is that you already need to find... Oh, I guess it's the issue in general, that you already need to find a lot of specific Pokemon very early in stacking Mew on top of it, because Mew's only going to be good early. Also, I'm not sure why they're playing Jirachi. That seems very bad. Because you can't... Like, you you don't have Shaman, so I don't know why you're running Scoop Up Net. And if you're not running Scoop Up Net, you shouldn't be playing Jirachi. And you can't attack with it, but you can attack with Lele. And Energy Drive is actually not a bad attack. I actually have game on board. They do play Scoop of Net. Weird. That seems very terrible in my opinion. I'm just going to keep trapping by it. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and bench Landy here and then Juniper. Hmm. That's actually kind of a nutty Juniper. I'm going to go ahead and Heavy Ball for another hole here. Uh, there's nothing in Discard that I really want to Dowsing for. I can't get a KO here. I'm safe to just sit here. So I'm just going to keep stacking energies. 
I'm gonna go ahead and smooth over for, uh... Hmm. I guess another... Well, I think I get strong energy here. Yeah. I'm getting strong energy because there's potential that I just attack with Landy. So, we... I think I'm just gonna pass. They are not doing very much damage at the moment. Although, I guess the situation that I attack with Landy is if I ace a roll of the coal. So, I probably should have gotten another stone energy. Because if I ace a roll of the coal, I have the strong energy for the Landy. What is he gonna? He either has like Ninja Boy or Col. Oh yeah, Ninja Boy and Colrus. I guess he can Colrus for seven, but meh. I don't think I care. Hmm. Considering that I drew the energy, if I did have a access to quick ball i would have been able to just go for guru and then great catcher the dead i take two prizes so as good as what as good as that juniper was it also wasn't that good the biggest reason it was good is that it gave me a second uh coal to put down and it gives me options for the following turn and the way things are going i don't know how they're gonna deal with this coal with assault vest and fucking double stones on it. If they do find blower, they get rid of the assault vest, but I have another one. And I can just dowsing to put my swell back into play. Which is probably what I'm gonna end up doing. It's gonna get Coco Prism. Is he really going through all this trouble to spit shot my Macargo? Like, really? Is that really what you're gonna do? Like, there's a reason I'm not attacking to your Stun Fist. Like, I don't care if you kill Macargo at this point. I have three energy about to be four set up on a coal with a lot of shit. Okay, yeah, he is just gonna blow away my swell. I mean, I guess you do set up multiple mods by doing that, but whatever. I'm very curious what my opponent does here. Because I have the Lele option still. He's probably playing Scope, or the fact that he's playing Scoop Up Net means he's probably playing Zig as well. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with... I mean, I disagree with just benching it to begin with, but I, if you do bench it, you use it this turn. Yeah, that's correct. Then you go into me and you spit shot, uh, the, I guess the Macargo, since you can't really do anything else. I can just Lele for Guzma, too. Like, I have so many options here. A lot of options. The only way that I can say for sure is incorrect. He's playing Stardust. Well, I mean, sure, but I don't even think that's correct, in all honesty. I'm going to go ahead and get coal here. Well, uh, then I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to Lele for Guzma. So I'm going to stack it here. Guzma the Jirachi. Smooth, mo smooth Brain. Uh, now that I know we play Stardust, I'm going to get a basic energy off of this.
Float is good. As much as I would like to bench Dede here, I can't really afford to. By the way, the reason I get a, the basic energy is because if he does burst the Seeker for Stardust, that means I'm not completely locked out of all my options. How many energy did I I feel like I pressed a bunch of energy. But I also have to get over the fact that I, whenever you only play 10 energy, and all and there's three different energies involved, and you play five le less than five of all of them, yeah, it's, it's going to feel like you play less energy than you actually do. Also, he only has one more stadium left. He is going to stretcher, which was my main concern. Probably Stardust here. Yeah. I think I'm just gonna versus see get a, get a versus seeker off this smooth over. Although I could dowsing for Juniper this turn. Yeah. Okay. Here's my play. I'm going to Dowsing. I'm going to get Juniper. Get Ball away a Colossal. And get Guru. As much as I don't like putting a special energy back, it is prizes. So... We follow it. We're gonna great catch of these eruption shot. So I have four energy left. So I think his only option is just to keep Stardusting, which is fine. Uh, let's probably wisdom back to Slugma. There's no cargo there. I think I'm cool with just smoothing over, uh... Another basic energy. Yeah. I'm just going to smooth over a basic energy. And then versus Seeker for Guzma on the bat. Because I don't have float, I'm just going to escape rope. And he either sends up Kramer or he sends up the Stunfisk. If he sends up the bat, he's stupid. And just go eruption shot. And that should be game. Because I have an, I have at least one other basic energy, or I have at least one other energy in the deck, for a fact. I know that for a fact. So he has to go in and then spit shot the Macargo. And hope I don't draw like a Versus Seeker or an energy. Yeah, there's a there's a lot that. My opponent has to do and can't do. 
So he is going to have to spit shot the Macargo. So unfortunately for my opponent, if I just draw energy, uh, not exactly what I had in mind, but this play also works. Yeah, I can just go into Landy. Uh, I can do this. I can stack the top. Then I can just hammerhead the Mew. So playing the Ace Arola burns another card, another dead card out of my deck that would otherwise be uh, in the way. He has to scoop up Nathea. Mew. And he can't scoop up Nathea and attack. So that, that just puts him in checkmate. Unless he plays a uh, counter catcher. I guess he could scoop him at that Mew. But then he's just burning even more energy. I guess he hasn't played twin energies yet. So. There is still <sighs> technically a way my opponent can win. It's so vastly unlikely. Like, it's it's not going to happen. But it, it could. Like... Literally everything would have to go right for him on top of him playing a bunch of cards that they normally don't and shouldn't play. Which they kind of already do in the Zig scoop em net shit. I'm pretty sure I have this game locked in the bag. Like, I'm up four prizes. I have checkmate on board. I have checkmate in hand. So you have to in me scoop up net and then kill my guru or my cargo. Probably the guru because if you're inning me, that's your best bet. You're going to Metro now, which actually won't do anything because my Colossal is not damaged. Although, is Metronome any Pokemon on the field that you your opponent has? Not that it matters because I do just stack my top deck with guru. Well, I'm not going to find out until my opponent decides to do something. And they have not played a supporter this turn yet. They've also only played two versus Seekers the entire game. They are going to Jirachi, probably for the in. For Guzma? Ew. Guzma is not what you do here. If you're not inning me to one, you lose 100% of the time. Like, the fact that I benched the Slugma means that I probably have Macargo or an out to Macargo in my hand. What? You know I have the coal in my hand. I ace the Rolla. The, the big coal didn't just disappear. It's not... Like, it didn't just vanish into the Shadow Realm. It's in. It's still in my hand. Don't, what are you doing? Did he just gave up? Yeah, it's an EX that doesn't really work. You ever just eruption shot for forty to win the game? Funny. But yeah, as you can see, as long as you basically don't get donked, the deck is very good. And I'm not just saying that because, oh, it's the video, you should go back. No, it's I think Colossal is a genuinely good deck in Expanded. Like, it's, it's so strong. It, it hits really good weakness. Damage resistance is broken. Uh... 
it's really hard to KO. Basically can't get O-Code by anything in the format except for like a three energy, three grass energy Aggrow. Uh, doesn't even lose that hard to Aggrow, which is probably its worst matchup on paper. Again, I think the biggest issue stems from just bricking turn one. And that's, Stall is also very good and susceptible to the exact same thing. So, a TLDR, find basics turn one and you win a lot of games. Not even basics, it's just finding your evolutions in general is pretty much how you're going to win. So, yeah, um... You could cut the you could cut the Karina down to three. You can get Dead Eye down to zero. Uh, you get up the heavy ball count to four. I was playing four originally. The only reason I cut it down to three is because I decided to play heavier Karinas. And I, by the way, I do think Karina is a card that is should be played in heavy counts in this deck. Like heavy, like heavy Juniper, heavy in, like in either zero to one Karina. That's fine. But I think for the sake of pure sheer consistent turn one. Karina is a lot better. And depending on how you draw, even turn two, Karina is probably really good. Because if you use it on the first two turns of the game, assuming that nothing dies, you can get the guaranteed coal and the guaranteed Macargo. It's more of a matter of whether or not you find the attack. So, yeah. Surely for the sake of me having having heavier Karina, I do think Dede is worth having. And I think that Dede is better than Bat here. Because whenever you're batting, you're only batting for a couple of cards. When your hand is dead, it's usually because of, like, three dead cards. Like, a versus Seeker with no supporter. A supporter that doesn't do anything. Like Acerola. Or one of your one of items slash tools. So. Yeah, anyway, uh, there's the deck. Uh, go follow me on Twitch. Link in the description. And uh, I'll check you guys next time. Peace.